I love the whole two-faced thing going on right now. It's awesome. The light is shining like right in my eye, by the way. Oh, welcome to, actually it's not gonna be summer for a few more days, but it's getting there. The days are certainly longer and I love it. So let's get to my low, my high, my active times. Oh, I was gonna say that my low is it rained last night and it, you can clearly tell it rained and I look over there, oh, the sun's like right in my eye. Holy cow. Um, so yeah, it rained. It rained hard yesterday. I mean, don't get me wrong, we need it. But when it rains, sometimes when it just rains, it pours, you know what I mean? Um, my high is I finally got to do a post regarding the subs you get from Veneers. Seriously, like, if you're in Big Flats and you're in the mood for a sub and you don't want to have to drive all the way to Otterwell and Horseheads, go to Veneers and get a sub. Honestly, the only thing about Veneer subs that's a problem is, like, they close, like, their sub kitchen way too early. Like, if it's, like, almost 6 o'clock, they're going to shut it down. I mean, listen, I'm not saying they should be open to, like, 9 o'clock at night, but, come on, 6 o'clock? Most people get out of work at 6. They, there's, like, no chance. I don't know. That's, that's just weird. Got, so, uh, yeah, last night I got, uh... I did my post on the Veneer subs after I get my um, all-American sub. It's got roast beef, ham, and turkey on it. America! With also, um, you know, lettuce, tomato, onion, mayo, ro uh, bell peppers, some sweet, sweet pickles. Mm. Seriously, the sub I got last night probably had more pickles on a sub than I think I've ever had. And some people would argue that still may or may not be enough. It was crazy. Oh, the one thing I like to do with my uh, subs from the year. Oh, keep in mind, if it was like the Philly cheesesteak or the buffalo chicken or the chicken parm, they're all really good. I wouldn't do anything with them. But with the all-American sub, what I like to do is I'll uh, toast it. Seriously, just put it in the oven at like 250, like 45 minutes to an hour. It's messy, but you get a really good cheese bowl. Nice hot toasted sub. Mm -hmm. That was good. Um, all right. What was my active times? Oh, right. Uh, when I was visiting my old man last night, he told me to empty the dehumidifier for him, and so I did it. Yeah, his basement's very humid in the summer, so he runs a dehumidifier. That's, that's pretty much what it is. So, it's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everyone. We have a brand new Hot Ones guest. Let's see who it is, shall we? Actually, put my head up here. And the 17th Hot Ones guest of 2023 is. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No way. All oh, right. So. <laughs> Keep in mind, again, this is Hot Ones, so, and even I said, I've even said it myself, when it comes to whoever the next guest is, virtually anything can happen, but you get to those kinds of guests where you would never expect them to be on, and they wind up being guests anyway, and it winds up being some very good <laughs> Excuse me, entertainment. I say it's because this week's Hot Ones guest is Melissa McCarthy. You know, when I think of Melissa McCarthy, I really have to point out just how far she's come in her career. Like, okay, so full disclosure, back when I was a freshman in college, and instead of studying, and instead of studying like I was supposed to do, I'd watch a lot of TV. For whatever reason, the Gilmore Girls was on, and that's where I first saw Melissa McCarthy. But never did I ever believe that, like, I mean, virtually any actor in Hollywood can become famous, given the right role or the right circumstance, whatever. And it's very clear that 
it was the movie Bridesmaids that really brought Melissa McCarthy to stardom. Huh. I should do a movie on Bridesmaids. I'll have to get to that eventually. I should. Although I will admit, before I get into um, more about Melissa McCarthy being a guest on Owens, I have to do a quick, um, I, I do need to mention a quick my thoughts on um, uh, Bridesmaids, right? So, this is like in the very mid to late 2000s. And rom-coms were either raunchy, bad, not very funny, or all the above. Like, there were some movies where, like, a friend of mine would be like, if you, if I saw this movie, I had to give him man cards. And I first see the trailer for Bridesmaids. And, no kidding, I could actually feel my testosterone levels drop by watching just the trailer of that movie. So, straight up, I was convinced that if I saw that movie, I would, like, I, I'd, I'd go in as a man and, like, leave as a woman. That's how, that's how feminine that, that movie looked to me. I mean, obviously, that's not the case. In fact, not only am I still a man, I'm also very comfortable with my sexuality. So, yeah. I really should, I really should do a movies about bridesmaids. I can't believe I haven't done that one yet. Especially when Melissa McCarthy is arguably the best thing in the movie. Well, she is for me. Okay. This isn't gonna be a how. This, this isn't the 17th Halloween, it's the 20th. It's a movie about bridesmaids. No, it's, it's a Halloween. I'll do an actual thing about bridesmaids eventually, though. I, I want to do that now. But, I mean, here's the thing. No one ever expected Bridesmaids to be that good. It was nominated for an Academy Award. I think it was. Hold on. Well, I know that it was the, the, hold on. Am I really looking this up real fast? Oh, it was 2011. Okay. So, early 2010s. Yeah. Yeah, it was Oh, yeah, Bridesmaids was nominated for not one, but two Academy Awards. It was nominated for original screenplay, and Melissa McCarthy, who was this week's Hollywood guest, was legit nominated for an Oscar. She didn't win that year, but that movie brought her to stardom. It did. And honestly, for... I mean, I'm really glad that Melissa McCarthy wants to do, like, serious stuff as well. Kind of like what she did in Gilmore Girls. But anyone will tell you that a lot of her best moments have been in comedies. You know, The Heat, Spy, um... That's really not the only ones I can think of. That, uh... Oh... She's been in other comedies too, but the problem is they've been kind of hit and miss. Specifically, if Melissa McCarthy's husband is directing, no offense to the guy, I'm sure he's really cool. Actually, I think. Wow, I can't believe this is going back to Bridesmaids. I think Melissa McCarthy met her husband on doing Bridesmaids. I think. I need to, I'll look that up later, but like, if you see like the new, um, uh, Booking.com commercials starring Melissa McCarthy, like, her husband, that's the flight marshal from Bridesmaids. I'm not kidding. Um, but I'll, um, I'll look that up eventually. So, again, it's for Booking.com. Oh, partly, I bet Melissa McCarthy's is on Hot Ones this week, not partly because of Booking.com. Because she's like the new celebrity for it now. But also, believe it or not, to promote Little Mermaid. Yeah. You know, it was funny. I have no intention of seeing any of those live action Disney remakes. And obviously, Little Mermaid is no exception. I mean, 
A lot of people have said it's good. As for Doug Walker, who I swear by on this notion, he says, yeah, it's not very good, but it's definitely one of the least bad of all the live action Disney remakes. Yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really a fan. Although, here's the thing. Before I continue on, one live action Disney remake, I'll totally be on the phone. I'll actually consider watching under one condition. Because, you know, listen, Disney's only going to get to it eventually. It's going to be, it's, Robin Hood is one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. And, you know, at this point, they're totally going to do like a live action, well, live action. It's going to be kind of like Lion King, only have it, only all the animals are going to be anthropomorphized. Because that's what Robin Hood was. You know they're going to do that. But there's one casting choice I want to see if they do. And if they pull it off, I'm totally going to give the movie a chance. Because one of my favorite, because my favorite side character in that movie is the rooster. And I want the rooster to be put, and I want the rooster to be played by Matthew McConaughey. Yes! Oh, that would be such perfect casting. That would be so perfect casting. I, I mean, have you seen Matthew McConaughey? He looks like a rooster. His hair is perfect. Seriously, he looks like a rooster. He'd be perfect for him. Anyway, um, Ron, we're talking about Melissa McCarthy, aren't we? Matthew McConaughey was already at Howard's. It was a very good episode, too. Um, so, anyway, regarding, uh, uh, Melissa McCarthy being Ursula in The Little Mermaid, the live action Disney remake. Everyone was so enthralled. Wait, isn't... Hold on, let me look up the word enthralled. I keep forgetting if enthralled is in term of endearment. Oh, capture, okay, so the definition of enthrall means capture the fascinated attention of. So you know what, enthrall, so enthralling is a good word for it. Everybody was so enthralled with the fact that, you know, Ariel was going to be black, that I don't think anyone even remotely thought of, who's going to be Ursula? That's why Melissa McCarthy, that's why Melissa McCarthy Got cast, I think, because no one's going to pay attention to her. So, um, yeah, she's promoting Little Mermaid, too. Cool, huh? By the way, again, I want to point this out. I'm not seeing Little Mermaid because of the whole black aerial thing. I just think a live action Disney, I think any and all of the live action Disney remakes are going to be horrible. That has nothing to do with Ariel's casting at all. I mean, listen. Disney, you want to remake your your old movies? There's no reason why you can't animate them. You're Disney. You not only have the money, but you also have the talent for it. If you really want to, you know, be all crazy, you know what? Honestly, why not just do like CGI Pixar stuff with your Disney remakes? You can clearly do that. Eh, but Disney's never going to do that. As stupid as the live-action Disney remakes are, unfortunately, if you are going to remake those movies, the way they're doing it is probably the only effective way to do it. I mean, it's stupid and totally unnecessary, and you're going to get made fun of for lack of originality, but, you know, if it sells and makes money, why stop? And like it or not, these movies, any and all the live action Disney remakes, have over time grossed a lot of money for Disney. Little Mermaid, I'm positive, probably was number one at the box office this past weekend. I'm sure Elemental is going to make even more money for Disney this week. So, yeah. Disney's actually got society in a box here. Although I still want Matthew McConaughey as a rooster if they do Robin Hood. I want to see that. 
I I would totally watch that movie if that's the case. Just because it's Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Here's what will happen. Probably you and McGregor's gonna be Robin Hood. Seth Rogen will be Little John. <laughs> Kira Knightley will probably be Maid Marion. Um, Pat Nozzle will be Friar Tuck. <laughs> oh gosh. I probably just opened up a huge can of worms and I was like, what though? Any of those casting choices are right. I so totally get bragging rights. I totally want bragging rights. Um, never thought that a hot ones guest would make me talk about my opinion on the live action Disney remakes, but here we are, I guess. I hope you all like this video. If you did like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on social media. As always, I am very humble that I made this video. For all of you guys watching, enjoy for today. We'll be having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. And remember, if any of you guys want to talk to us, we're here to lend you all the way back. Take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.